welcome we are visiting the values of the constitution of india the core of values are reflected in the preamble itself so we are desirous of being face to face with these values shall visit the preamble time and again the preamble let us read we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and opportunity and to promote amongst them all fraternity assuring the dignity of individual and the unity and integrity of the nation these key words sovereign socialist secular democratic republic justice social economic political liberty thought expression belief faith worship equality status opportunity fraternity dignity of individual unity and integrity of the nation these key words deserve to be visited individually as well as collectively today let us reflect upon liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship the words thought expression belief faith and worship as such can be made into two parts thought and expression as one group belief faith and worship as the second group as far as the first group is concerned thought and expression it in a way goes to the mental faculty maturity experience aspect of the human personality as far as the belief faith and worship are concerned these in a way go to absolutely different platform we can say it is a platform which is other than which normally is taken as a worldly domain so worldly and transcendental domains can be made two different phases of our life first is taken as the worldly life or manifested life or logical life or that relates to a mind second shall be taken as an index of the features of unmanifest life life domain or transcendental domain now here let us first of all put to ourselves as to how we are understanding these technical terms sharda which is the translation of faith then the senses mind intelligence soul its expression through mind through speech through actions now if we are revisiting these values and if we want to revisit them in the background of the ancient wisdom reaching us say in the form of bhagavad gita or in the form of sukhmani sahib then the enlightenment form of the the term faith as it is expressed here in the gita in the 17th chapter is sharda mayam aham purusha this purusha this man or a man is essentially is a faith 
reservoir values. Faith is the central value of the existence phenomenon of human beings. And then simultaneously it is added that Sattva Anrupa Sarvasya Sharda Bhavati, the faith has inherent potentiality to always take on the truthful path. Then at the same time it is also mentioned the Triveda Bhavati Sharda Dehinam Sa Sabhavya means the nature of the man as existence phenomenon of human body is that this faith is of three folds. Means truth is not the only feature of the faith. It may be rajas, it may be tamas. So the faith is a threefold path, but central, inherent, prominent part is that it will lead to truth. So when the faith itself is of three folds and when there is a liberty for a faith, then we have to put to ourselves as to how the persons of a faith on the tamas part or on rajas part are to be dealt with how this set of persons of our society or individual among us are to be respected for their liberty of a faith. This is a big constitutional question. We shall visit this aspect of a faith because faith though inherently ultimately will lead to truth but essentially it is of three features and these three features are tamas, rajas and sattva. Once we are ensuring once we are securing liberty of faith for each one of us, then isn't it that we are creating a situation when the individual of a faith of Thomas qualities and individuals of faith of religious qualities as well will be claiming liberty for their tamas features, for their rajas features as well. It is here where it looks as if the preamble itself also deserves to be revisited. Isn't it that we shall revisit the preamble as far as the liberty of faith of all ingredients is being ensured. Isn't it that this liberty shall be ensured only to those individuals whose Faith is of truthful ingredients only. It may be another question as to how initially we can classify the individuals in terms of their faith. Then natural question will be why to provide this liberty at all? Anyway, the reality is the existing position is that we Indians have ensured security for liberty for individuals to be to live as per their faith. The caution here 
should be there or should not be there is a question. But as preamble is not judicially enforceable part of the constitution, so the bigger danger stands averted as the individual with the faith of Thomas ingredients is not vested with a right to invoke the judicial jurisdiction and to have a sanction of the orders, writs of the courts. However, this as well is an another question going philosophically or going jurisprudential wise or going strictly as per the integral situation taking preamble as an integral part of the constitution itself then this question is to remain it is to vibrate and it will continue vibrating. Here in Gita, in chapter 4, it is further mentioned that Shardavan Labhyante Gyanam, knowledge comes to those who are faithful. Such is the quality such is the potentiality, such is the feature of faith. And when we come to this enlightenment of this powerful institution of faith, then naturally it is blissful that we are having place for faith in the preamble itself. So when we are revisiting these values of the preamble, then let us devote extra time to this liberty, the liberty of faith, irrespective of the faith being rajas, tamas or sattva, but once it simultaneously stands preserved and once simultaneously it being the enlightenment of the Gita as that inherently faith will put on a truthful path and further as that faith is the basic ingredient of acquiring knowledge. Therefore, it looks satisfying that we are having this liberty in our constitution. Further, the Gita itself is point is preserving, is pointing as that beyond senses is mind, beyond mind is intelligence, and beyond intelligence is Atma, is soul. Once this is the hierarchical placement of these constituents of functional reality of our life, then certainly when we look to the liberty of thought and expression, then we have to be conscious as that this thought and expression if it is only at the level of senses, then certainly it is a very mundane 
level of thought and expression. Once mind is a step ahead of senses, then the thoughts and expressions of the level of the mind are certainly are different qualitative values than that of thought and expression of the senses origin. Even beyond the mind, even beyond the man, is the pedestal position of intelligence. So the thought and expressions which are not intelligence based one, the same naturally will be of lesser qualitative values. A step ahead is the Atma, is the being, is the soul. So those individuals whose thoughts and expressions are Atma based, their thoughts and expressions are certainly going to be of very, very different quality. However, as the preamble stands, it is not distinguishing between the thoughts and expressions of the senses level, thoughts and expressions of mind level, thoughts and expressions of intelligence level, and thoughts and expressions of the ultimate Atma source level. Once this liberty is ensured and secured for each one without demarcating whether those are the existence phenomenon at the senses level or of the mind level or of the intelligence level or of the ultimate soul level, then there is going to be a great mix. And it is great mix which will require proper scintilling, filtering, processing, channelizing whether our constitution as its substantive provisions are providing at all taking care of such requirement. If it is not, then how we shall approach, how we shall have a recasting for these liberties. The in intelligence is further preserved as an enlightenment. Once we are providing a liberty of worship, once we are providing the liberty of belief, then this belief and worship liberty, if the same is viewed in the context of their values preserved here in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. It provides that the ultimate truth, the God with capital G and gods with small g are not to be distinguished then the end fruit is certainly going to be of different qualities. It is provided that those who worship the Devatas, they stand limited to the fruits of those domains. And simultaneously it is also preserved that one can live a fearless life only if one is restricting one's own dharma as the other's dharmas are of 
fearful features for the individuals. It is this demarcation, it is this caution, it is this enlightenment which further brings us face to face with the liberties preserved and secured in the preamble for every individual. Let us revisit what is being provided in Sukhmani Sahib, Nanak Brahm Gyani Ka Brahm Dhyan. The ultimate is that one shall aspire for the eternity enlightenment by remaining always focused upon that eternity domain. How far, to what extent, by how many, at what phases of their existence is to be such a state is in itself is a question which will again force us to revisit the preamble as the constitution is going to be constitution is going to be for whole range of individuals of whole phases of life. Therefore, these values, these liberties appear to be fully justified. Simultaneously, these liberties also put us at caution and expectations are that once such a range of liberties are secured and ensured, there shall be equal responsible apparatus which will make it feasible statement as that the constitutional apparatus is fully matching the responsibilities cost by preamble. Thank you very much.